get to the point of maintenance care. What does maintenance care mean? Jess? Maintenance? We're having an issue with paying attention. Does everybody want to put down their flowers and start paying attention? Okay, what is maintenance care? I appreciate you filling that. It's very encouraging that you're filling that. Well, uh, that is um, once you you're in line and you're not supposed to say anymore, you can't. Okay, did you hear what Janice said? She said once things are in alignment, what do we do? We keep them there. Uh, Renee, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. You keep coming back to maintain in line. Right, not as frequently, right. but you come back once in a while to do what? Right. To maintain what? Uh, what? To maintain the nervous system. The, the, you came in with a compromised nervous system. We've got to realign it, and then you choose to maintain it or not. And some people choose to maintain it, and some people choose to argue with me, and some people choose to disappear. It's okay, because I love you all. <laughs> But, but the point is, Mike, I see him every Sunday, and even during the week, he drives me nuts. Now he has this issue, right? So I said, Mike, do me a favor. I want you to try this thing called blood purification. I want you to do a blood purification. Just do it for 21 days. Ask your wife, no, my wife will never do it. Well, next thing you know, Rhonda comes in, and Mike and him do this blood purification. He says to me a few days into the blood purification, he says, man, this is weird. I said, what's weird? He says, you know, I'm getting adjusted now again, but i got to tell you, I went and changed the litter of my cat, and for the first time in 14 years, I didn't have a, a violent sneezing attack. And you see, his, his view is that it's weird. And for me to hear somebody goes and changes the cat litter and has a sneezing attack, that's weird. You see, two different ways of thinking. One person is thinking inside the what? Right? When he has a sneezing attack and then he has his allergy thing, where does he go for the solution? Where does he go? He goes to Walgreens, Eckerd, CVS. He goes there to take a what? To take a poison. His body is responding to the poisons in the cat litter, so he has a great idea. I'll take another poison to offset me from the poisons that I'm already responding to. Because that's the way he thinks. And so he comes in, he does his blood purification, he can't walk or run with his wife. She walks and runs at least five days a week, Rhonda Avila is, if not six. And now, he says he has the swollen knees. Has anybody here ever experienced swollen knees or a hip or neck or back? One to only three of you? Four, four, four of you. That's not bad. Four. Usually it's like everybody. Okay. So the swellingness is keeping him from running. And so what happens is, he starts doing the blood purification. He's back under corrective care, which he shouldn't have been by now. He should be on a once a month maintenance program or less, more or less, depending. And here he is coming in all the time saying, man, I can... My knees aren't swollen anymore. Why not? Because when you purify your blood, it means you rechange your liver. When you rechange your liver function and you cleanse out the colon and you build up the kidneys and the lymph system, now the body has got the, the toolbox to fight the stuff the way you've been living for 10, 20, 30 years. It didn't have a toolbox before, because before, when your body was experiencing something, instead of getting to the root, what, what were you trained to do? To mask and cover with what? With more poison. With more chemicals. It's a double negative. And so this guy, he's excited, man. And so he writes this thing here. Did you read it? Did you all get a copy of this? No? Okay, did you, did you read that? Well, what does it say? It says, uh, something happened. My wife and I dove into this 21-day detox program. In short, I would say that I feel about 10 years younger. I mean, the guy's 50, he feels like he's 40. The mistake is he's basing his health on how he... Feels. Very good, you're getting it. So, um, not to say that I was miserable, oh, by the way, he quotes feel over here. Before the... In fact, I'd already benefited from a change I had made a year or so prior by going regularly to, to our office. While that did wonders for me, what did it do? Not signs and wonders, just wonders, just wonders. Okay, and so these wonders for me in the body ache department, I had no idea that the food I was eating was keeping me back from experiencing a better quality of life. My wife and I have both lost several pounds. Is anybody here really interested in losing weight, honestly? Okay, so, 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 so you know, as much as, as much as what I'm teaching you is not a, a selling thing, you know, I, I believe me, if I put a sign on the corner on the marquee, lose weight now, or ask me how, come this Thursday night, we could probably fill this place up twice its capacity, I think, because people, you know, it's so deceiving. I don't want you to lose weight. I want you to pull parasites, tapeworms, pinworms, 
poison chemicals out of your body so your body can re-regulate itself. Plus, it's very important to get the adjustment to keep the pressure off your central nervous system. So what does he say over there? To sum things up, I remember a comment I had made off the cuff to Dr. John. And this guy is extremely conservative. But look at the comment that he makes. He says, he says that I, I felt so physically energized and just plain old good that I blurted out one day, I would be willing to bet that 90%, this is an elder in our church, that 90% of all physical health problems stem from the junk that I eat. He didn't quite say that. What did he say? The, the habits of the what? The habits of the Lord, right? No. The habits of the world. It's a habit, man. You know, if you're going to make a habit, why don't you make habit to eat celery and lettuce for breakfast? If you want to make a habit, make a good habit. But you make these habits that uh, they're on the computer screen, on your smartphones, and on your billboards, and you're killing yourself. I need you people to be, to be an army in this war that we're in, and I need you to start getting the tools so you can fight the war. You can't fight the war when you're living on poison. I mean, you can, but will you be effective, yes or no? No, of course not. So, so let's look at some of the junk. I mean, I, this is, you know, I mean, I mean, check this out. Look at this thing. I mean, we, I'm not toxic, Dr. John. I have a woman that comes to me, and she says to me she's been getting adjusted now for a few weeks, but now she's noticing that, that her blood pressure has changed, but she still has these headaches. And I asked her what she did, and this is what she does. She works at the toll booth of the East West Expressway. Do you know what happens at a toll booth at the East West Expressway? What kind of toxin could there possibly be? Anybody want to share? Carbon monoxide? Does anybody know what happens when you breathe too much carbon monoxide in your garage? You go home and see the Lord if you're a believer. It's, it's, it's a poisoning yourself. And so I said to her, you're breathing in this junk. It's going into your body, being filtered by your liver. We have got to change it. Now, now this whole thing about cholesterol. Does anybody know anybody that has high cholesterol? Okay. Can anybody tell me what high cholesterol is defined as? Okay. Over the 200. The American... The, the, well, 200, you know, 150, no more. 200, you okay. Very good. The American Medical Association, 10 years ago, they came out with a drug, it's called statin. And so with these drugs, the normal cholesterol level used to be up to 260. But once they started prescribing statins, they said, hey, let's lower the level. So their normal level, they forced down to freak us out. So now they say they want us to be at 200 or even at 175. Do you know who is the creator of cholesterol? Take a guess, Dave. The Lord! is the creator of cholesterol. And if God created it, I said it's there for a... Who am I to take cholesterol out of your body? If you don't have cholesterol, you guys don't, you're not aware of this, but, you're, but veins are popping in your brain every day. They're called capillaries. And they pop, but something happens. Anybody want to take a guess what happens? What happens, Cliff? No. What happens, Dave? Help me out. First time he's ever been a janitor, they don't know what happens. First, he talked about it. She would think what? You would think what? The capillaries are popping in your body, in your uterus, in your prostate, in your brain, in your heart. And what is the body doing? Recovering. It's recovering by secreting what? Cholesterol. That's the purpose of cholesterol. To clog up the holes, man. But I have an idea. Let me take a statin. Let me take Lipitor and Crestor. Maybe mix it together. Make a little concoction. Swallow this thing down every day. Oh my gosh, my husband had a stroke and died. My wife had a stroke. In fact, they made a bold statement in the last two months that women that are taking, what's that insulin drug, every, um, metformin? Mm -hmm. That women that are taking metformin, the chances of, the chances of them dying of a stroke are 70% or greater after the age of 60 if they were taking metformin. And another, another, another report said two out of three women will die from stroke if they had a history of taking that form. Did you guys hear about that report? Say no. No. No, of course not. But you're here tonight to hear it, aren't you? Say yes. Yeah, because I mean, you're here because you basically want the truth, right? So let me give you the truth. For those of you who do go on the internet, and what do we see here? 
we see a CDC statistic. The leading cause of death in America, according to who? The CDC. The number one cause of death in America is heart disease. Okay, that means your heart failed, so you must be dead. Yes? Yes. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I think it's a lot more than that. I think it's 100% of people that die, die from heart failure, but that's just me. I'm really confused. Your heart fails, you die. Anyway. Number two cause, cancer. Now, can you reverse heart disease, yes or no? Yeah. Absolutely. Can you reverse cancer, yes or no? Yeah. The number three cause of death in America, according to who? CDC. The Center for Disease Control, located in the people who brought us Ebola, oh. right? Where, where, did they, where did they do their experiments? Anybody want to take a guess what part of the world? West Africa. When did they start doing these experiments? Christian, how long ago? 1980. 1980, they started doing the experiments by submitting these Ebola toxins. Did you know that? Why not? Why didn't you know that? Why didn't you know that? That they were experimenting with Ebola. Why didn't you know that? Why didn't, they didn't they didn't know that? Know. Why didn't you know that? Why didn't you know that? Why didn't you know that? How do you know that? They don't. <laughs> okay, hold on. Renee said something very powerful. Because they. Who's they? Coleman? Christina's going to tell us. Christina, who's they? The evil ones. <laughs> Can we have a title for the evil one, Tony? The system, the world system, is not telling you that they're releasing this stuff and experimenting. And now we're so surprised of what's happening. I mean, is anybody here really surprised? I think most of you probably are a little surprised. I'm not surprised at all. I was just waiting. Thank God I got my Ebola. Uh, oh, by the way, they're going to have Ebola vaccines, by the way. And remember our philosophy, Christian, I don't have a problem with this. I'm speaking for my son. But the Ebola vi virus vaccine people... What we're going to submit to them, of course, in our email is very simply this. After you and the board vaccinate yourself, your spouses, and your children, and we'll wait six months to see, <laughs> and then we'll start lining up people for Ebola virus vaccines. Okay. So, number three cause of death in America, according to Darwin's Medical Dictionary, is iatrogenic causes, to, the number three cause of death, 225,000, which means that the death is defined as induced in a... Patient by a physician. Why don't you guys get it? I'm not saying it. They're telling you. If you go to a physician, the chances of you dying in the top three. How many people in America? <laughs> There's six and a half to seven billion in the world. How many are in America? There's not one billion people in America. Two fifty million. 250 million. All right, so we've got about four or 500 million people in America. 225,000 are going to die because of something that was induced in them by a who? Why do you take your kids to these people? Why do you take your spouse to these people? Why do you take yourself to these people? If they're telling you, if I told you that, here, can I have a name tag, please? I need a couple name tags for Renee and Joyce. Can I have a name tag? Here. If I said to you, now this is really cool, you're going to love this, I think most of you can relate to this. If I say to you the number three cause of death in America is wearing a name tag on, on your right shoulder, what would, where would most of us wear our name tags? Right no, we wouldn't. We'd go to the left shoulder. Because this is the number th three cause of death in America. Tony, am I going too fast for you? No. Okay. <laughs> so, Renee, if this is the number one cause of death in America, where am I moving my name tag? Uh, they're telling you the number, they are telling you the number three cause of death in America is induced by a physician. So guess what you're supposed to do? Go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Can somebody translate for Jen? Go to the doctor. Go to the chiropractor. Go to the doctor. Go to Dr. John. Stay away from these physicians, especially ones that are are, 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 are wolves dressed in <coughs> sheep's clothing. I've got colleagues of mine that you go to a chiropractor and they're wearing a white cloak. And they've got their name written across the thing. And they've got this thing wrapped around their neck and they can listen to your heartbeat. Who cares about your heartbeat, man? Get more life in you, change your habits, and enjoy this experience. Ye shall go out to all nations and make disciples of men. That's what my Bible says. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the 
This is what we're here for, man. You guys got to get stronger. It tells you right here, don't go to them, and you still go. And you know why you go? Well, the reason why I go, come on in, honey. The reason why I go, can you slam? Yeah. Here you go. Everyone say hi to Amy. Hi. Can you, guys, can, you, can you make a few more of these names, please? Amy? Nice. What's her name? Well, you got Renee doesn't have one. Joyce doesn't have one. Amy doesn't have one. Okay. So let's recap. Everybody tell me, what is the number three cause of death in America according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta? Heart disease. Okay, everyone said together, the number three cause of death, according to them, is? The number three cause of death in America is caused by? Doctors, physicians. Physicians, okay. The, the activity of the physician. And not what they're giving you, not so much they diagnose you, but they really that you do that. Okay, okay. How many people die from pharmaceutical side effects a year? Anybody want to take a guess? <laughs> it's the number eight cause of death that didn't make it to the top seven. Go on their website. They are taking you folks. Has anybody ever heard of a, the wrong kidney being taken out? Yes. Yeah. Has anybody ever heard of the wrong leg being amputated? Yeah. Okay. This is, this is my point. My point is you guys don't get the information when you look at their website and they're telling you that they are the number three cause of death in America. My only suggestion is to do what? To start taking responsibility for your healing. To start looking to the Lord. To get on your knees. To seek His face and to say, God, what am I doing? What am I not doing? Show me. You're not here for by accident. I mean, you guys are supposed to be here tonight. This is not an accident. Everyone, is heart disease reversible, yes or no? Yes. 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 Good. Is cancer reversible, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Is stroke reversible, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Is respiratory disease reversible? Yes. Yes. Are accidents possibly unintentional? Yes. Are they, they're accidents. They're re and is diabetes reversible? Yes. I did a message here Tuesday night, and during the message, thank you, did. And during the message, there's this pastor here from uh, uh, Day Spring Community Church up in Sorrento, Plymouth Road or something. And the pastor is sitting here on the table. I take care of him, his wife, his kids, and his kids have gotten married, and they're full wise. But he's here, getting here late on Tuesday night, because we all know that we have late night appointments on Tuesday night. So those FedEx guys and UPS guys that you see driving in their brown trucks, so that I can get here and get the care they need. So I go in the back. He says, Doc, i got to tell you something. I said, what's going on, Mark? He said, well, I was at a conference this weekend, and a guy came to me and said, Pastor Mark, my diabetes has been healed. I said, okay. He said, but you got to hear the shot. He says, he says to me, this is what I finally did. I went to a chiropractor. So Pastor Mark went, whoa. And, and there was a bone on the nerve. And it was blocking the signals to my, my pancreas. And he adjusted this nerve to my pancreas. And my pancreas started working. This is all common sense to you guys, but he was very excited because he wanted to encourage me. The point is, according to them, that the power that made the body healed the body. What we have to do is remove the interference. Can I have that blue sharpie in a minute? We've got to remove the interference. We've got to get to the cause. So, in the culture that you live in, I mean, look at this. The world, the WHO estimates that 4.6 million die each year from what? Causes that are directly attributed to what? Yeah. Air pollution. The woman is getting headaches every day by working at the East West Expressway toll booth. And so, what does she tell me, everyone? What does she do for her headaches? The first mistake is she has health insurance. So, she takes the health insurance. What does health insurance allow her to do? Go shopping. Go shopping where, everybody said? To the pharmaceutical store. So we go to the pharmaceutical store, we go shopping for free because we have health insurance, and what do we buy? We buy something for the pain in our cranium. She has headaches because she's breathing carbon monoxide in, and what we're going to do is we're going to give her ibuprofen, we're going to give her Tylenol with, with pros that, uh, Percocet, we're going to give her Oxycontin, Oxycodone, and we're going to want to know why she's constipated. Then we're going to know why she's not sleeping the way she used it. Then we're going to know why she's getting numbness and tingling down her arms and her legs. But doc, my doctor said that, you know, I just have to mix the right drugs and I'll be okay. 
She comes in, I give her one adjustment, her migraine headache goes away, and now I'm the migraine specialist. I have nothing to do with migraines. What did I do? I removed the interference, and what happened, Christina? Help her out. She's not <laughs> and, and the flow of life, which came from where, Fallon? Fallon, where does it come from, sunshine? Can I, use it? Can I use it as an example? Yeah. Do you want to come over and stand with me? <laughs> no, no, you don't say that. So sunshine and I have known each other for about what? Three, 15. three weeks? Fifteen years. Okay. <laughs> Fifteen years, and sunshine has a serious issue. And her husband has had serious issues over the years, haven't we? You know, we're all going to have serious issues, Amy. We're all going to have them. The question is, Dave, where do we go for the solution. See, that's the question. Because we're all going to struggle, Bob. Even you struggle every now and then. Mm -hmm. For a man of wisdom as you are. So she goes and has an MRI. And then she goes ahead and she, she's somebody recommend to have an MRI with contrast, which is not a cool thing. And she has this lesion, they tell us, right? In where? There's a mass in where? The spine. i got to get done with this in at least three more hours. Okay, in the spine, right? And are you concerned about having a, 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 a mass in your spine? Are you concerned for her? I'm losing sleep over it. I'm crying for you guys. I'm like, Lord, you've got to touch You've got to heal her. You came back and we prayed, yes? Yeah. And what did you just say to me in the family room? I'm getting that? better. Well, 70%. And by the way, did they find a tumor in your spine that you know of? No. So here we are, fear-based, telling you that she could have a tumor in there. You're thinking, I'm not thinking that you're thinking, but you were thinking it. I'm supposed to be stronger than you. That's why God called me in this position. It's nothing personal, but <laughs> don't think I'm weird, although I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and here you are. To glory be to who? To God. I mean, that, that mask could be anything. It so could be something. What do I know? People always say, Doc, I got this thing here. Like it says, God on my head. God, Dr. John God, you know, I've got this thing. It's right here. And if you could just, it's just right in this thing and it's fixing this thing. And I don't know anything. But I do know that God heals. I do know that there are miracles. I do know that you have a chance in, in Christ. I do know that He redeems. I do know that He delivers. I do know that He touches. I do know that He's a great physician. I do know that all my trust and hope is in Him. I do know that. And I do know that when they found out that you have an annular fissure, I said, Amen! <laughs> it's not a big deal. Get a few extra adjustments, come do a couple of these things. What did they say? The Environmental Protection Agency. I think we're doing a lecture for them soon. The 28th. We're going to the local Environmental Protection Agency and we're going to talk to them about life and death, health and disease, and God and Satan. Light and dark, however you want to term it. So, who, get, who knows good in math? What does it say? Amen. <laughs> Four billion. Four what? Four billion. Four hundred and two hundred and forty eight million eight hundred and sixty five thousand two hundred and thirty pounds of chemical. <coughs> Either dumped into the public storage or released into the ground, surface water. Yeah. And that's what they reported. Yeah. And that was back in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> so, this thing about food additives, we now know that genetically modified foods have been in there now for two decades. But nobody cared when I was talking about it 20 years ago. No, I mean, seriously, no one had a care about genetically modified foods. The European Eastern Foundation in Europe kicked out Monsanto. <coughs> kicked them out of the out of the Europe Federation because they're destroying people, man. 